Well, I thought we'd have a little treat and, and surprise uh, for you is a black canvas. This is a 16 by 20 inch black canvas for oil painting or acrylic painting. Uh, we will be using our dry pigment, dry pigment by Sneller. This one is the Indian yellow. I don't know if you can see that too good. And first of all, I'm gonna cover the canvas. I'm gonna use the liquid light gel. And I'm just going to put some small amount of gel on here. A little more than I wanted, but that's all right. And just covering the canvas is what we're gonna do first. And if you need a, a mixing slab, you can go to Amazon and find a very good one. That's what I have. It's a glass and it wipes off easily. It's some of the Indian yellow with a small scoop. It doesn't come with a scoop. You have to buy your own. Uh, you can buy them as well on Amazon. Uh, you can buy a small one. Uh, they use them for uh, baking, uh, samples, different things of that sort. Uh, I just happen to get that kind. And first I'm going to mix it and then I'm going to show you the canvas. And we will get a small amount of that gel. And mix it up. And you want it rather thick. So that's why I chose the, the gel this time. And the liquid is Winsor Newton, is what I use. Uh, you can use another kind if you like, if you find another one that uh, works better for you. But I thought we would enjoy something from Alaska today. See if you can guess what it is. But we're going to paint the entire canvas yellow. Uh, first off. So I have that all mixed. And I didn't use all that gel. You don't have to use it all. It helps if you put the gel down first and then the pigment I found. Uh, it does help you to mix less. So here's the canvas. And let me set aside that cup of coffee. And just starting up here at the top. It's a transparent yellow. That's why I chose the Indian yellow. You can see it. And it shows. But it doesn't really... Uh, it doesn't overpower your canvas, the background of your can canvas. So that's why I chose Indian yellow. Give some more of the uh, Indian yellow on my brush here. I'm going to do a scene from Alaska, some a really snowy scene. Cold winter time. I thought we'd have some Alaskan dog sled uh, tracks as well running down the middle of it. Let you in on some of what we're doing. Getting all the corners of the canvas covered. And you want to go side to side once you've got it laid on the canvas. Just to smooth out some of those brush marks, brush strokes. And no mountains today. I wasn't going to do any mountains. I'm going to make a little hillside here. A little hillside. And it just runs down the canvas right about there. And put that down a little further. Make it go uphill somewhat over in this direction. So I will have to wipe off the the, uh, the slab, the mixing slab, so bear with me for a few minutes on that one. Uh, don't forget to wipe it off when changing colors, uh, especially if you don't want to mix the two hues, uh, the two colors, or change it to a different hue of the, those colors. laying down this Indian yellow still covering all of the canvas you can make it a little more yellow if you want to 
but in this case I'm just going to make a thin even coat. Almost green in fact, because it lays against the black. And the yellow and green does make black. Make sure you might not know of you might know of that as well. So just painting it on here. That one, and give me just a moment. I will wipe that off. And I use Scott Blue paper napkins, a shop full paper napkin, and it holds most of the paint very well. Oh, got some dust there of the color I was mixing. So just wiping it off completely clean. Uh, you might want to leave the gel there if you want, if, you, if you'd like to use that instead of wasting some of it. It might help you as well. Save a little happy look or two. I'm just wiping it off thoroughly. Next, we are going to use the iridescent dry pigment by Sneller. I uh, hope you can see that fairly well. And I will mix this off to the side here because I have the canvas in front of me and it's wet now. I put in three small scoops of the iridescent. Set that off to the side. Use some of this liquid gel and mix it with the iridescent. Just using a Bob Ross uh, number six fan brush, and I used the um, number the uh, one inch uh, landscaping brush earlier, and we just want to make some shimmers here. We want to make a long ribbon just glowing in the sky, all up different places, and they just intertwine all over. And as you can guess, probably by now, we're doing some northern lights. I thought that might be exciting. I think one coming up from the horizon here. And what you want to do is getting some more of that iridescent. You want to get as much of that as you can because it does mix with the yellow. But we're gonna make some gold uh, northern lights. And you just wanna pull up the fan brush right along those lines. And it shines and it shimmers all the way up the canvas. All the way up. It's just so beautiful in Alaska. see these northern lights. I saw a video of it and I just had to do something like that. I thought that that's just a beautiful hue. All that gold just in the sky. That looks so pretty. It's just as if the gold and 24 karat gold in the sky. It's an Alaskan, really, it's an Alaskan day, I believe. I'm not incorrect. 
It just mixes and intermingles. And you may want to reshape some of those lines somehow if you would like. But it does just make a smooth ribbon of the Northern Lights. And I got lost in my Northern Lights here. here and laying out this final ribbon over here. There we are. So that takes care of those two brushes. I set that off to the side. paper napkin. Grabbing another paper napkin. I'm gonna mix off the slab. I mean not mix off mix it off but uh, wipe off the pigment, the iridescent. I'm gonna leave some of that iridescent right there. I'm gonna leave some of it right there and mix it in with some titanium white. So it shimmers onto the snow, and it's just gorgeous. And here is the Titanium White by Sneller. And it's a little full of a jar. How did I get that out without making a mess? Because this is keeping it clean. Let's try to keep it clean. Set that spoon back in the jar. Put the lid back on. Get some more of the liquid light gel from our rinser Newton. your dog doesn't get hold of this because my dog did and it wasn't too good for her it went everywhere though so luckily she is fine now my sweet little Heidi I mean not little but she's sweet she's a Burmese mountain dog likes the cold weather and possibly even Alaska too Built for the snow, cold weather. With the snowflakes flying through the air, she couldn't be happier. So I have here the mixture of the titanium white and the iridescent and it should look completely white and it might shimmer a bit but it might not shimmer too much so let's try this it should look about that consistency wipe some of that off and we have the snow here of the Alaska Alaska wilderness and it comes right down to the slope. You can make little shimmers in the snow with the yellow if you want to mix some more. I'm trying to just mix less at this point so that I can show you in less time. And everybody knows how to do it a little better. And then you can do it some more on your own. Have a little more fun. See what, what kind of things you can do on your own. 
There's just some ideas I'm tossing out there that you could do. Got another hill right there. Maybe that hill goes clear up to another slope. Yeah, right there, that there. Mixing some of that yellow. I'm gonna make some trees and so that's it. So this is a consistency of paint that you're probably not used to working with. It's a little thinner. Uh, definitely fun to play with and work with because it's something new and everybody likes a little new something to really have some fun with. Make some little tracks where some snow dogs have been. I'm just covering the canvas at this point. You can make any sort of fresh stroke you care to. You're gonna have to sit on the slab though. You need to hold the canvas. There we are. at all. I don't think it, there's any trash against on the, on, on the ground. It's very frowned on for people to litter. Especially for the bears and everything, so people just don't do that. Perhaps get some of the yellow if you can and make little darker places in the snow. Set that brush aside. We're gonna make some trees. <coughs> Excuse me. Using the Thalo Cyanine Green for my Sneller. I'm gonna mix a small amount of this, not very much. Just two small scoops of that. Just two small scoops of green. And also, as well as the chrome green light by Sneller. You can get some other brand of dry pigment. I'm not sure what other brands they have. It's a fairly new type of paint, so you're lucky to find very many different brands, but it's a lot of fun. And set that back in the jar. Cap back on. Set the dogs to the side. I'm just picking up the fan brush that I used for the yellow. Oh, almost forgot the liquid gel. Can't be forgetting that. Oh. Can't paint without it. Just a small amount of that onto your mixing board. Mixing slab. 
number six uh, fan brush by Bob Ross. His brushes do work with this paint very well too. So I'm using the Thalo Cyanide uh, uh, green and I am mixing it with a small amount of the liquid gel. And I'm going to mix in some of the chrome green just to give it some vibrancy. Give it a darker hue there. That's a bit better. Try to make it as consistent a color as you can. You can make it a little less consistent. And I was gonna paint some trees. And Bob Ross's trees were always happy. But I'll show you what you can do with a brush but in a different way. You can just go up the sides and start from the base. Just tilt the brush slightly. And just go up the sides and make a make a vertical happy tree. A little more vertical. And you can add a patch or two of grass in there. Some grass around the base of the tree. Go into some more of that pigment. And you can also use uh, Bob Ross's usual technique of painting a tree. You just go side to side, the fan brush, whichever way you like best. You can do them all different ways. Yeah, you got a little patches of grass there too. I'm going to leave some of that white though because we're going to go back in and make some of that uh, some snow on the, on the tree. When you're adding this pigment it's easy to add too much. Uh, I've still not yet mastered that so you could try to do that yourself or on your own. It does help. Making a few trees here. I want to make that a little more vertical, I think. It also helps to avoid any patches of grass that you're going to try, that is going to just happen to make on the ground if you don't want to do that to do it vertically. So, different techniques, different ways. Everybody probably find their own little way. Just happen to like those little patches of grass at the bottom though. Get some more of the paint. And one one more tree. One more right over here. And there's a tall tree too. And make that one side to side. leave some bare spaces where it's perhaps not had a good growing year or just just a space in between uh, your own choice and maybe a mother tree let's, why not why not let's just do that in the background there back to the backdrop and setting aside the hand brush with the green I'm picking up some of the titanium white and we just want to add some white here and there where the snow is falling. Into the tree, just on the limb a bit. Trying to make sure you keep that brush as white as possible. It's easy to pick up the green, it does pick up very easily. And just going up the side of that tree. As toward the base, you're going to get less and less because less snow falls at the base of the tree. Some more white. And maybe some snow happened right there. Some, yeah. some little 
snowflakes. A little snow here and there on that tree. Or the titanium pine. Maybe that tree didn't get a lot of snow left on it somehow. The wind just blew just right. Perhaps that's that's the case. snow on the trees, little snowflakes, and maybe a darker hue you can use to make the tracks, the tracks of the sled dogs, the lighter green perhaps, and the sled dogs around, and over here, over here, and up through the hill there. Little paw prints in between. Little paw prints. And that's just the way they ran. And that's about all I have for you today. Um, if you want to go over some highlights on the uh, ribbons, you can. And maybe it wasn't enough of the white for you. Try that. I'd still like to see a little more highlighting there. Yeah, that looks better. And you want to fade it toward the middle, right about there. Maybe that one's not that visible. Some of them maybe make it less visible, but it's still a brilliant sky. You want a really bright glow, glow to it, a very bright glow. It just looks, looks as if someone took some gold and just threw it up into the sky. And it just happened. It shimmers up there and it moves. Maybe it's a giant treasure chest. Way up there in the heavens. And one more. Make that duck behind a tree. Tip there behind a tree, and I'll make it one. Got one more. Don't want to forget that one. Some of them you want to kind of fade out a little more. Uh, so maybe not so much but there you have it that is the golden northern lights with dry pigment you know, I'm keeping it clean with Brandon Lehman my artist name is Silent Tears uh, silent because uh, it's great to just sit and take in the wilderness and also my mom is hearing impaired but tears is because uh, you work with watercolor, and you, you can work with it standing, and the water, you watch the way it weeps, and you can encourage it to weep it into a very beautiful picture. So, that's me, and that's all I have for you today. But have a good day, and a good time.